This is your dose of daily market wisdom with master trader Nick Santiago. Starting from humble beginnings, Nick has been beating the markets for over two decades. He shares with you his take on the profitable trades that will have you moving towards financial freedom in no time at all. To see an in-depth review of his track record and much more, go to inthemoneystocks.com. Welcome, and this is your daily dose of daily market wisdom with master trader Nick Santiago. I'm Kerry Lutz, and today is August 10th, 2020. This is show number 94. So it's another Monday, Nick, huh? It is. It's another Monday where we see the markets higher to start the day. Now, we have to put a little emphasis on the NASDAQ. That is not up today. That's down about a half a percent. That's seeing more distribution but I have to tell you, Kerry, I like what I'm seeing. We're seeing a lot of money come out of technology, specifically the cloud software names, and they're going into other areas of the market. So we're seeing some industrials catch a bid, like 3M, Caterpillar, John Deere. Also, a lot of the small caps. Small caps are the strongest uh, indice out here. That's up 1.65%. Anytime money goes into the small caps, that's a sign of risk-taking, and that's always a positive. And then we see the transports up quite a bit today. Dow Jones Transportation Index up 2% today. So that's a real big move as well. And uh, nothing really wrong when you see small caps and you see uh, the transports up the way they are. That, that's a sign of strength. But money coming, money is coming out of the uh, technology names that have been the hot ride since the March lows. And that's good to see that it's going into other areas. Yeah, and one area it's going into is uh, gold and silver miners, right? Well, gold and silver miners have been seeing money um, the whole time. So they've really been the biggest performer anyway since the March lows. I think they've ag actually outperformed technology. So uh, it's been a great run for gold and silver. And they're up again today. Yeah, silver is up close to a buck, huh? Yeah, we have uh, silver futures today up. A, <laughs> I mean, it, it's pretty amazing to see this, but uh, I, it's up $1. eighty-five right now to $94.40 in silver futures. That's almost a... 7% jump today after a little Friday sell-off. So, I mean, they're not backing down by any stretch. Yeah. So what do you, what do you think it's telling us here? Well, it's telling us a, a few things. One, it's, it's telling us that um, we may be seeing inflation. That, that's first and foremost. Number two, um, with all the central bank intervention, it's probably the only real currency on the earth um, that you know will will continue to rise as these uh, politicians continue to create and print more money. So you know, and, and it could be sending us other messages as well. But those are the two that I would take away from it right now. Yeah, and that that makes a lot of sense because you know you create this new money, it doesn't instantly create inflation, and and at first it goes obviously to the commodity sector before consumer prices go up, but. You know, it would make sense. Uh, it started kind of about uh, five, six months ago, and and now you know we're getting into that time where we're seeing the the commodities go up. We really are. I mean, it's it's not just in gold and silver, but it's in copper, and it's in a lot of other areas as well. Even the aluminum sector is starting to really move. And um, again, you know, anytime you have a, devalu a devaluation of the dollar and the dollar is falling today, um, you know, that is definitely going to happen where you're going to see commodities move higher. But there have been, you know, a, a fair amount of time, you know, over the last couple of years where gold and the dollar have moved up together. So, you know, gold is sending us a lot of different messages out here. But, you know, I, I still think um, if you don't own gold bullion or silver bullion or some coins or something, you should have something like that um, going forward, just, to, you know, tangible, not just the paper uh, assets where you can trade. Uh, but I would definitely tell people to always have some tangible assets on hand. Yeah, well, we've been telling people that for uh, going on 10 years, Nick, you know? <laughs> we have, and, and it's amazing to me, though, that I get so many emails each and every week. This week, I probably had over a dozen asking me, hey, where do you go and buy physical gold and silver? And I just chuckle at it. I'm like, wow, you've been, you know, a member for so long and you haven't, you know, listened or taken possession yet. But, you know, they want to do it when they see the price move up. But when the price is low, you know, nobody wants to jump in. And, and, and that's the time when you got to pick it up. Yeah, well, that's uh, well, that's kind of a variation on Warren Buffett's theme. When, when there's blood in the streets, that's the time to buy. And when uh, when greed is running amok, and that could be the time to sell. 
but uh, but this rally really been a long time coming, especially in silver. Yeah, silver is broken out. I mean, there's no two ways to really uh, talk about it or explain it. But I mean, you know, the 50% retrace from the 2011 high is coming up into place. You have to think we're going to hit it. That's at around $30.70 on silver futures. And then after that, I mean, the next big move is all the way to $35. And then you go back to basically the, the top from 2011. I mean, silver has broken out from the lows, which is a power move, unlike say gold, which is breaking out already at a high, silver is breaking out from a low. And when that happens, that's telling you this is something that is going to be prolonged for a while. It's something that the move is not uh, just a one and done type deal. It's got a lot more staying power down the road. And hence the old Wizard of Oz. You know, you better, I know they use the ruby red slippers in the movie, but the book, it's the silver slippers. And uh, you're seeing silver really make its move. Yeah. So, so 50% retrace, and that's a significant number, huh? Yeah, that is a significant number. That's going to be around $30.73, uh, $30. I believe. And you'll go up into a lot of resistance. So, again, um, you know, wait for a pullback around there. I think we should get one, but I've been wrong already. I, I thought we would get a pullback just from the, the recent spikes that we've seen, and we haven't gotten it. But, yeah, that's 50% retrace is always a very, very psychological number. For, for all traders, because you're going up into, you know, half of the move that you had from the high to the low. So again, around $30.70, watch it there, uh, let it pull back, watch for pattern. But after it breaks out there, it goes to 35, then to 40, then back up to 50, and it breaks through 50. Watch out, we could be looking at, you know, a major move, but we're not, we're not near that yet. Yeah, well, I'm seeing all these uh, junior miners, anything with silver in its name is just crushing it, Nick. Well, I mean, people are, are starting to catch on um, that silver is going to be the place to be. And, you know, I, I don't know how long we've been talking about it here, Kerry, but it, we've been saying it for, for years. But uh, it, it really is going to be the place to be. And what I just said, you know, when stocks break out from lows, those are power moves in the making. They're still not, it's not even nearly started. So, again, I know people think, um, all right, this is a big move. We're coming into this retrace level. That's going to be the end of it. That's that's not even the end of it. It's not even the start of it. So again, you wait for those pullbacks. You watch the pattern. This is probably the most important time in history to be following the charts and learning how to use the charts. So again, um, big big move in silver, and it's still my favorite going forward. Yeah. So so you really think this is the most important time in history to follow the charts? <laughs> By far, without a doubt. I mean. If I didn't have the charts right now, I would be dead in the water. Um, I know so many people that sold out of the stock market at the March lows. Um, I, I can't even begin to tell you. And that they, these people are just starting to get back in. So, yeah, I, I do think if you haven't learned the charts, you know, you, you need to know them right now because this is what's going to navigate you through the next 10 years going forward. Yeah. Yeah, well, I couldn't agree with you more for obvious reasons. And, yeah, it's uh... – so the charts aren't the perfect predictor, though, because you know there's still uh, there's still variation that takes place. You know, life happens, right? Right. They're not a hundred percent. I mean, all we do is interpret where the money flow is going. Things can change in an instant, any time. But when things change and they break certain patterns, you know to get out, and that's the good thing about charts. You know, even when uh, that you're wrong, you you actually know that the next move could take you to a much, uh, a much could paint a much different picture. So uh, again, that's the, the good thing about charts is that when you're wrong and, and the best thing to know about being a chartist is, you know, when you're wrong. And if you are, you, you can admit when you're wrong and you can reverse course, you know, there's still a lot of money to be made there. Yeah, I couldn't agree more. Well, we're really entering into the political season now, the presidential election, because uh, summer is going to be over in a few weeks. Or less than a hundred day count off. What kind of effect is that having? Do you think? Well, I think right now you have to you have to really pay attention because this is probably the most uh, highly contested election I've ever seen. I've never seen some of the antics like we're seeing this year ever in in all the years that I've been alive. So it's very very political. So you want to be aware of that. But generally, in a in a in a year in a year where you do have a presidential election. Um, markets notoriously are bullish. However, this year we've seen coronavirus, we've seen, 
you know, the shutdowns. We've seen all the shenanigans that are getting played by the talking heads on the mainstream media. I mean, it's just something that I've never witnessed before. But right now, um, I'm going to stick with the charts, and the charts are telling me one thing. The trend is up, and I'm not fighting that. All right. The trend is your friend until the end, right? That's right. Trend is your friend, except at the end. And uh, right now, he hasn't shown me the ending sign yet. Yeah, well... And uh, we'll we'll go with you on that one, Nick. Anyways, uh, out there, take a look at Nick's record on InTheMoneyStocks.com and the Twitter feed, ITMS, at ITMS, at NickSantiago01, at Kerry Lutz. Questions, comments, email us. We've got a few stored up for later in the week. The email address is KL at KerryLutz.com. And Nick, we will uh, pick up with you tomorrow morning. Sounds good, Kerry. And so concludes another episode of Daily Market Wisdom with Master Trader Nick Santiago. Be sure to go to his website, InTheMoneyStocks.com. Don't forget the Twitter feeds, at ITMS and at NickSantiago01. 